I Love Plays online worship service. My name is Pastor Pam Stoneman Lane, and I'm glad that you are here. You're also invited to join us online for our Facebook page devotions, or join us on Zoom on Sundays at 10.30 for our short communion service, and on Wednesday nights for book club. Please contact us for the Zoom link. And for our members, the annual meeting of Faith La La Way Lutheran Church will be held Sunday, January 31st at 11 a.m. by Zoom. Those who are not able to access the meeting by Zoom are invited to connect with a Zoom buddy. Please contact us for the link and if you're interested in getting or being a Zoom buddy. Now I invite you all to set up your worship space by placing the candle on your table and lighting it as a sign of Christ's presence. Place a bowl of water on your table and mark the sign of the cross on your forehead as a reminder of your baptism. And then if you like, you can find your Bible and read along with us for the scripture, or you can read online, or you can print a copy of the bulletin also found on our web page. Welcome to worship. Let us begin in song. Oh, yeah. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. flip-flopping with my promises because it didn't work out? Do you think I talk out of both sides of my mouth? A glib yes one moment, a glib no the next? Well, you're wrong. I try to be as true to my word as God is to his. Our word to you wasn't a careless yes canceled by an indifferent no. How could it be? When Silas and Timothy and I proclaimed the Son of God among you, did you pick up on any yes and no, on again, off again waffling? Wasn't it a clean, strong yes? Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray, the great amen. God's yes and our yes together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. The word of the Lord. The guy. 
Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of our Lord. This Gospel story is full of surprises. Imagine a paralyzed man on a stretcher coming down through your roof. Even Jesus seemed surprised and amazed. But then Jesus surprises everyone by saying to them, Son, your sins are forgiven. I'm assuming that the friends were surprised because they were hoping that Jesus would physically heal the man. As for the scribes, they were surprised, but in a negative way as they wondered, who did Jesus think that he was? But Jesus isn't done surprising people. He demonstrates his authority to forgive sins, something that cannot be seen, by doing something that can be seen, healing the man. Jesus says to the man, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And the man immediately stood up, took the mat, and left. Again, everyone was surprised and gave thanks to God. I like this story in the Gospel of Mark, not only because of the many surprises, but also because I think that we can see ourselves in this story. We could be one of the friends, adapting to the challenges of getting their friend in front of Jesus. Or we could be part of the crowd, amazed at the sight of the man coming through the roof, and then even more amazed as he walks out healed. We could be one of the scribes, protecting law and tradition. Or we could be the homeowner wondering, what just happened to my house? But today, I'd like you to first imagine yourself as the one who was paralyzed on the stretcher. We don't know much about him except he was helpless. He may have heard about Jesus and his healing power, he might have wanted to go to see Jesus, but he clearly couldn't get there on his own. He was completely dependent upon his friends to lift him, to carry him, to adapt, and find a way to put him in front of Jesus, even when it meant carrying him up to the top of the house and digging through the roof and then lowering him down to Jesus. The way that the paralyzed 
Jesus Son as an act of faith. And it was their faith that carried him to Jesus, and it was their faith that Jesus commanded. The paralyzed man was completely dependent on others to get him to Jesus. Now, the way his friends did it was unusual, but I wonder, haven't we all depended upon the faith of someone else? I'm guessing that you can think of ways in which other people have carried you when you were in need. Maybe for some of you, like me, it was the faith of your parents and grandparents that brought you to faith, and also that literally carried you to the baptismal font to be baptized. For others, maybe it was a neighbor who brought you to Sunday school, or a spouse who started going to church, or someone else who introduced you to Jesus. As Lutherans, we believe that we all receive the gift of God's love and grace and are made children of God in baptism, not by our own doing, but as a free gift of God. As Martin Luther says in the small catechism, it is the Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, and enlightens us and keeps us in the true faith. However, the Holy Spirit does not work alone, but engages and works through people of faith as the body of Christ to do God's work in the world. And so as people of faith, we depend on one another. We depend on others to encourage, sustain, and help us to grow in faith. When you were young, it may have been your Sunday school teacher or a camp counselor who taught you to trust in the Word of God. Later, perhaps a Bible study group, a choir, or a prayer partner nurtured your faith. Or maybe other people in the congregation encouraged and inspired you, either by their example or perhaps by the way that they reached out with prayer and care in ordinary ways or in a time of need. I know that I have been a recipient both of ordinary care and prayer from people of faith and in extraordinary circumstances too. I will never forget the feeling of helplessness that I experienced after being in a car accident and not even being able to tell the nurse that I wanted a drink of water. I was flat on my back, also suffering from a head injury. Like the paralyzed man, I could do nothing for myself. But like his friends, my family did not give up. They took me out of the hospital and away from the doctors that were ready to put me in a care center and throw away the key. Instead, they brought me to another hospital and another doctor who had some other ideas. Towards the end of my month-long stay in that hospital, this doctor came into my room and asked if I had any questions. I had tons, but all I could say to him was, am I going to be okay? He answered, yes, because you have faith. And then he left. I held on to that prognosis and that promise with all my heart. But as I look back, I realize that it, it is not only because I had faith, but also because my family had faith. And that doctor had faith. Turns out that he was a missionary doctor and knew quite a bit, not only about medicine but also about faith. Faith makes a difference. Sometimes I have been and you have been the one who is like the paralyzed man who is in need and has been lifted and carried up to Christ Jesus. Sometimes literally and at other times in prayer. And sometimes the Holy Spirit calls upon me and you to do God's work in the world around us. For example, on my block, one of my neighbors has just been diagnosed with cancer. Another neighbor immediately organized a meal train 
to help care for the daily needs. Brothers and sisters, friends in Christ, our faith, your faith, makes a difference not only for you, but also for your family, for your friends, your neighbors, and everyone else whose life you touch. Your faith, active in your life, is the vehicle, the vehicle for God's yes to be proclaimed. This has never been more evident than in this pandemic time in which so much of our ordinary life has been different. I have noticed the many ways that you, people of Faith La La Way, friends and neighbors, have responded in faith to care for the other. Some of you have been making phone calls to those who are isolated in care centers. Others have sent notes. All of you have been praying. These are just a few of the ways I know that you reach out and care for one another and for the community. Brothers and sisters, friends in Christ, your faith makes a difference. A difference to you and to the world around you. May you be blessed with the faith and courage to both carry others and their cares to Jesus and the grace to receive the care and kindness that others give in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
led by Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the gift of faith and give us the wisdom and courage to both act in faith and receive with grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, healer of our every ill. We place in your care all in need of healing of body, mind, or spirit. Be with all those living in care facilities and all who are suffering from long and short term illnesses, including Beverly, Bob, Brad, Karen, Corey, David, Galen, Helen, Herb, Jacqueline, Jane. Larry, Linda, Lois, Lucas, Margaret, Maya, Ramona, Sandy, and all of those hurting neighbors, friends, and relatives that are on our heart and in our mind. We name them for you silently or aloud. We pray for these dear people and all who need your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, as we wait with eager yearning to return to worshiping you all together in our sanctuary, give us patience to wait until we're safe. Protect the people and bring us risk. Bless with perseverance those who are working in hospitals, clinics, and care centers, and grant speed and care to those working getting the vaccine safely into as many arms as possible. We ask for your wisdom and guidance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all creation, we give you thanks for beautiful flowers and wild animals, plants that feed us, and pets that delight us, sun and snow, forests and farms, and all who care for these and all of the gifts of creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers and those sighs of prayers too deep for words. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We worship God by supporting our church and the mission we share with our offering. This month's mission outside of our doors is Cherish All Children. We can mail in our offering or we can give online. Let us pray. Oh God, receive, receive the gifts we share and send that you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us with faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. I will be using um, the version printed in the bulletin, but you may say the Lord's Prayer in whatever language and in whatever version that you would like. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of 
and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen.